Here are some Windows tips that you may or may not be aware of. These are all inside Windows without the need to download anything. And we're gonna start off with a good old mouse. You obviously know that you can left click and you can right click, duh. And you know that if you've got the scroll wheel, you can page up and page down on a web page. But did you know there's something else you can do with that scroll wheel? So here I've got my file explorer open, but watch this. If you use the middle scroll button and you click on the file explorer in your taskbar, it actually opens up multiple instances of the file explorer. This makes it so much easier to copy things between your USB drive or your flash drives and your hard drive. You simply drag and drop them and then there it's done. Now it's not only for file explorer, anything on the taskbar can be done with the middle click. So here I've opened up multiple instances of notepad as an example. I can do the same with a calculator. So here's one calculation done on one side. Now I wanna calculate something else. I can simply middle click and it opens up another instant of the calculator. Right click on each of the icons on the taskbar and it will show you some additional options like the most visited web pages or in your file explorer, you can even pin things that you access pretty often. Once you start using this, you'll see just how quickly it becomes part of your daily computer usage. But wait, there is more. How about doing this with your mouse? Here's a good old Word document, and you know that you can drag and highlight a particular paragraph. But if you hold the Alt button down, look at this. You can actually change the way that it highlights things. And now that it's actually highlighted, you can do anything you want with it. You can copy and paste it. You can perhaps even change that color, and it will only apply to anything that's highlighted. That's actually pretty cool. Now, another thing that you can do with your Word document and with your mouse, let's undo that quickly. If you double click a word, it's obviously gonna highlight the entire word, but if you triple click it, it actually highlights the entire paragraph. Right, next up, let's talk about the command prompt. The command prompt is really useful for running some quick tasks, especially if you're having some internet issues. Fire up the command prompt, you're gonna go down to your search, and you're gonna type there CMD, and there's a little box called command prompt. Now the first command we're gonna go into is called IP config and press enter. And it shows you a whole bunch of information about your configuration. Right now, this is my IP address of my computer that's connected to my gateway. And here is the IP address of my gateway. My gateway is typically the router. If you're ever having any issues and you need to go make changes on the router, put that IP address in a browser and it will take you to your router. Now let's say I cannot get out into the internet, I wanna figure out what's wrong, I can use this command, ping, and then the IP address of my router. What this does is that it sends information between my computer and the router and says, hey, can you see me? Uh, do we have a problem connecting to each other? And if the answer is no, that means the good connection between your computer and the gateway and your router. Then you ping something out onto the internet like google.com and it says, can you actually get there? If you cannot and you can get to your router, it means it's a service provider problem. Oh, and another little quick pro bonus tip here, here for the command prompt. If you ever need to run a command in the command prompt on a specific folder, instead of navigating to that folder or that directory and doing it manually, here's a quick way to get to that folder. What you do is you go to that folder and write here this PC pictures, save pictures, and then just type there command and it just pops you straight in to the right location. Just saves you a little bit of time navigating around your PC. And since we're talking about this, well, let's throw in one more tip here. Sometimes you need to see what you have behind the screen of the command prompt to see the name of the batch file that you need to run or whatever it is you need to run. What you can do is click on properties on the command window, click at the top where it says color, and then reduce the opacity. Now, when you do that and click OK, now you can still see the window behind it and still have the command prompt active to run your commands. Just a couple of pointless command prompt tips. Look, there are plenty more of these good utilities in the command prompt. Let me know if you wanna see a video about that. In Windows, we often work with multiple applications at the same time. It can be a bit of a mission jumping from app to app and the screen gets overcrowded, but that's where this comes in. Let's say you got a bunch of files and a bunch of windows open in your windows. Here's my notepad, I've got a calculator, I've got a browser, I've got my file explorer. 
But instead of trying to make them all fit on the screen nicely, well, what you can do is drag one of the application, take them a little bit off screen, and you can see this little window kind of that pops up. Look at it again. And then as soon as you do that and you let go, it's going to make it half the screen. And then you can choose what fills the second half of that screen. This snapping feature is really, really useful. What happens if you want all four of them on the screen? Instead of dragging it to the side, you drag it to one of the corners and a smaller box opens. And now you can choose this application that will go at the bottom. Now, if you want the fourth application on the screen as well, take the browser to the corner, then ta-da, now you've just snapped everything in place. It's all about being able to use your computer in the way that you like it and the way it makes it easier. Now, this I do as well. Go to search, type mouse, and this is especially useful for those of us who are <clears throat> a little bit older, who wear glasses perhaps. Um, this is a cool little thing to do. Once you search for mouse, choose the option called change mouse pointer. And here you can actually make your mouse pointer bigger and smaller. Now, it isn't showing it on the screen because it's screen recording, so it's not for some reason displaying the bigger size, but you'll be able to play with it in your own settings and set it so it's a lot easier to see where the mouse is on the screen. I like this option where you can actually choose the color of the mouse and intentionally just easier on the eye to find out exactly where it is. Now, another thing that's super cool to do is go to display and you can actually change the text as well. Use the slider, make the text bigger and smaller until you're comfortable. You don't have to kind of put your reading glasses on and off. Now, that only changes the text, but if you want to change everything, including the apps and the text in the main display, you can make everything bigger by choosing one of these options from here. And speaking of <coughs> the bigger... If you hold the Windows button and the P, it will open up this little option where you connect to an external monitor to make your screen obviously bigger. This is a simple way to select what gets displayed on that other monitor. And this next one is just a nice little time saver specifically for those of us who keep running out of space on our hard drive and have to delete large files. This one, I'm still surprised many people don't know about it. So here's a file I want to delete. I'm going to right click on it, press delete. Uh, this is normal. It goes into the recycle bin. And if you open up the recycle bin, there is my file. I can click on it and then I can right click and then click on restore. And now it's back to where it was. Okay. But if you've got very, very large files, what you can do is right click on it and then press the shift button and then press delete at the same time. And now it says, do you want to permanently delete it? Which means it's going to skip the recycle bin. So just a quick tips videos for those of us who may not be familiar with some of these. And if you were familiar with all of this, congratulations. Now check out this video right over here where I show you a feature in your browser that you should absolutely disable. Give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out and I'll see you in this video. Let's go.